Welcome back to the Morgan Trials. Uh, so it's been a little while, but we're doing something a little different today. Uh, you'll notice we're in our new house with the new bar. And uh, we got a request from a friend of mine, Mandy Raff, to do the longest day Alzheimer's fundraiser and help her out doing a video about uh, wine tasting 101 for dummies. Um, kind of, if you see people doing all this little frou-frou stuff when they're tasting wine, why are they doing it? What does it mean? Um, so we're going to tell you in a quick three to five minute video, what's it all about? So with that started, uh, we're going to try out just showing you kind of how it works with red wine, Chardonnay, sparkling wine, or a rosé. So, um... First things first, you always see there's all sorts of wine glasses. What's the difference between the bigger wine glass, the one that looks kind of the same but a little bit smaller, or this tall skinny one? Well, they're each for a purpose. This one, the bigger one, that's not a Georgia pour. That's not a Southern pour. That's not to fill it up to the rim. That's mainly for red wines and more full-bodied wines. This one's a little bit smaller. Generally, it's more for a white wine, something that's not as aromatic and full-bodied as a red wine. And then this, this is called a champagne flute. It doesn't have to be for champagne, that's just for sparkling wine. What it does, it makes the bubbles react better and come up more concentrated so you get more of the nose, the smell. It just makes the wine smell better. With that, there's five main things when you're drinking a wine or tasting a wine. They're the five S's. You've got, uh, first thing is sight, see, stuff like that. What does it look like? Then you've got the smell, S, you smell it. It's the aroma. That's the number one um, piece of the wine. Uh, but kind of right there with it, you've also got swirl. I kind of skipped over that one. You'll see the people sit there and put the wine in and swirl it around. That lets the aroma out. And then you smell it. And then you sip it. And then you savor it. So we're going to go through each of those things real quick. So with that, I'm going to be tasting Apothic Cabernet. Stacy's going to be trying for the first time Lefty Rosé, which is fermented with peaches. So it's not just grapes fermenting it. It's also uh, grapes. So grapes and peaches. So these two were just to show you what goes in these glasses. Um, okay. So... One of the neatest things, you always see people, they're sitting there cutting the foil, stuff like that. No, that's for fancy people. Teach you a little trick. You can grab your hand around the top of it. The foil comes off. You don't have to cut anything. That's, this is the easy way to do it. No, this is the easy way. <laughs> There's also that. That's called a scalping cap. Also, <laughs> screw cap. So, all right, then she's already ready to drink hers. Me, I've got to stick the corkscrew in, turn it a few times, get it until there's about two of the little coils left, put the top down, yeah, yeah, yeah. But look, it corks out. <laughs> One thing with a red wine, generally you want to open it before you're pouring it, give it about five, 10 minutes to air out, breathe before you pour. But, now that it's there, the first thing you want to do is pour the wine. You don't fill up the glass. You want about six to seven ounces is a good pour. That is how much should be in the glass because you need to be able to swirl it. So you want to pour yours. So as she pours her, the first thing you want to do is look at it. You want to see the wine, hold it up to the light, are you sure I can't do a Georgia pour? <laughs> you can do a Georgia pour if you want. Um, so the whole point of later. seeing it is the color. With a wine that's white, if it's really light, almost green to the yellow color, that means it's a young white wine. If it's golden color, that means it was in a, in a uh, barrel. It means that it's got probably some buttery taste to it if it's a Chardonnay or something. If it's a red wine, if it looks kind of rusty color, that means it's probably corked. It's probably a bad wine. If it's an inky purple, it's a young wine. If it's deep red, blue, it's um, it's probably a more mature wine, or it's uh, more, what is it? I don't remember, something about the acidity or something. But the colors, that's what it mainly means. But the other thing is, when you sit there and do it, notice, 
there's nothing, there's no wine dripping down the wine glass. If this was like a sweet red or a Moscato, you would see what's called legs or tears. Like that's what it's called when you see people doing this and it comes down. The little bit of wine that drips down, those are the legs or tears, and they're more prominent if the wine's sweeter. Uh, generally, that's the sugar. It's causing that to be a little more thick. So now that we've viewed it, seen it, now we're going to swirl it. So the whole point of swirling it, the whole reason that the wine glass has this tulip shape to it is because it allows you to swirl it and it traps the aromas uh, inside of the glass. It, um, and you want to do that before you smell it because, believe it or not, smelling it has more to do with if you're going to like the wine than the taste because that's where all the taste is coming from is the aromas. So you swirl it two to three times. Put your nose really deep into it. Don't sniff the wine into your nose, but put it in there. Close your eyes, take a deep breath, and try and see what minerals do you smell? What uh, floral characters do you smell? Every wine is gonna have a unique smell. There's hundreds of different things that you can smell in a wine. And each one is very different. I do smell the peach. You smell the peaches? I smell the peach. That's awesome. I'm anxious to try that. Um, so anyway, so you want to smell it. Then come sipping. Now you're going to take about a tablespoon of wine into your mouth, just a, a little bit more than a basic sip. And you're going to swirl it around your mouth for about three to five seconds. Make sure you coat every part of your tongue because a wine is going to have sweet, salty, savory, uh, may have bitter, it will have umami, which is your, that's the savory piece. Um, you just want to make sure it's coating it all so you get the true flavor. And then you'll see what Stacy's doing. She's breathing in air. What that's doing is your mouth has warmed up the wine, especially this one that was chilled, and released the aromas. When you breathe it in, it puts that smell into your nose and it makes the flavor pop. That's where you get the true flavor of the wine is by sipping it, warming it up in your mouth, and then breathing it in. Don't choke yourself. I've choked myself numerous times trying to do this. <laughs> um, I may do it here in a second. But that's how you truly savor the wine. And that's where I was saying, after you sip, you savor. And that's where you see, the, how long does it last? Some wines, you'll still taste it for a minute after you sip it. Some, it goes away quickly. That's the difference between a lot of times a mature wine, a young wine. So I with still that, have a hint of peach in my mouth because of it. There you go. So we're going to swirl. We're going to sniff. And then you savor. So that's the point of drinking the wine. That's how you do it. It's not difficult. It's just making sure that you're getting all of the different facets and all of the good parts of the wine. A couple of things to know with a wine glass. You, you see some people sitting there holding it like this, all fancy. Some people with their fingers up, stuff like that. If a wine is chilled or even a red wine, it's okay to hold it this way. As a matter of fact, it's almost preferred because what you're doing, remember how I said when you sip in the wine, it warms it up? Well, when it warms up the wine, it's releasing the aromatics in the wine. So it's sometimes if a wine is chilled, it's good to hold your hand on it to warm it up a little bit and it'll smell better and taste better. So that's why you don't want to find a glass that's this thick because you're not going to be able to warm up the wine as well and you're not going to be able to enjoy the wine as well. So I learn that's, something new every day. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's why you want a thinner wine glass. You want it to be tulip shaped so it comes up so it holds the aromas in. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of the 101 to tasting wine. If you've got any questions, uh, post them down in the comments below. And remember, please donate to the Alzheimer Foundation. Uh, you want to please donate if you're watching this on uh, this Saturday on the solstice. Uh, donate to the Longest Day Alzheimer's Foundation fundraiser, I think is what it is. Um, the details are going to be in the comments below. So uh, thanks for watching and let us know what you think. Cheers.